morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to chapel. Let's stand up. We're going to do some singing.
celebration here in chapel so we're gonna practice something um, usually when you come to church on Easter you kind of have this fun call and response thing where the pastor will stand up front and say he is risen and then everybody else will say what he is, is risen, risen indeed hallelujah that's right but we, we like to do a, a kind of a fun like chapel version where I'm gonna say Jesus is alive and then guess what you guys get to say yeah he is you guys ready? You're going to say it with some energy? Okay, here we go. Jesus is alive. There we go. All right, now that everyone's awake and all of our neighbors are awake, um, we're going to begin our chapel together today. This year, our theme is part of his story. We've been going through the story of Jesus all year long. And today is a really awesome part of Jesus' story. We kind of left last Friday on a, on a kind of a sad part of Jesus' story, right? Because what happens to Jesus the last time we met him? He died on the cross, right? But you know what I thought was so cool about Good Friday with you guys is we ended by singing that song, Sea of Victory, right? And you guys sang so well. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, like, I left chapel being like, man, like, yeah, today is sad, but like, I still had like that really cool sense of hope that we were going to see that victory. So thank you guys for kind of giving all of us that moment. So today I wanted to re relive some of the story that we've heard so far. Now, in the Old Testament, back in Genesis, if you opened your Bible to the book of Genesis, are you ever going to find the name Jesus? No, you'll never find the name Jesus. But does that mean that Jesus is not talked about? No, Jesus is talked about. We talked about this right at the beginning of the school year. This is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. It says, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and uh, dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And then it continues out on to say, I will put enmity between you and the woman, this is God talking to Satan, and between your offspring and her offspring, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now, up here, if you look at it, it says, um, and he shall bruise your head. Who's the he? Who, everyone say his name. What's his name? 
If you said Jesus, you are correct. This is the first time we get that promise of Jesus. This is the very beginning of us learning about who Jesus is and what he's going to be. Now, does Jesus come like right away? No, he doesn't. But this is one of the first promises that we have. And now let's, let's go on to our, our next promise that we get from, from God. This is Genesis 17, 6 to 7. This is God talking to a guy named Abraham. Have you guys heard about Abraham before? Well, there's this uh, song that we sing, Father Abraham had many what? Sons. sons, right? And many sons had Father Abraham. That was not always the case. There was a time in which Abraham had how many sons? Zero. He had no sons. And he, he and his wife were like, we, need, we want to start our family. We want, uh, we want to grow, right? And so God makes this promise to Abraham. He says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly is a big word, isn't it? Guess what it means? Really, really fruitful. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, meaning he's going to have a lot of children. And I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. When you look at that word, kings shall come from you, who is the king who's going to come from Abraham? Say his name. Jesus. Jesus, right? So we get this new promise of Jesus, that Jesus is coming. The Savior is coming. Does Jesus come right away? No, we flash forward into the New Testament, right? Hundreds of years. And who's born on Christmas Day? Jesus. Jesus, right? So now the Savior who was promised all the way back to the beginning of the Bible is here. But what is he? A baby. He's a baby, right? Not the king that maybe they thought was going to come. We flash forward about 30 years. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. What's he riding on? A donkey, A donkey right? And Jesus comes in, and what's everybody calling him on that day? Hosanna. They're singing Hosanna, and they're calling him the king. the king, right? Okay, so Jesus, not long after that, he says something else. He says this in Mark 8, 31. He says, and he began to teach him that the Son of Man, that's Jesus, must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests. Those are the religious leaders of that time. Um, and the scribes as well. And he'll be killed. And after three days, he will rise again. So now Jesus, even before Good Friday, even before he's put on the cross, guess what he's saying is going to happen? He's gonna, yeah, he's saying that, yeah, I'm going to die. You guys are going to see it. It's going to be a sad part of the story. But what's going to happen three days later? He's going to rise from the dead. This is another promise that Jesus is making. Okay, now let's flash forward three days later. Here is Luke 24, verses 1 to 8. It says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Where's Jesus' body? It's not there. Let's keep reading. Let's find out. While they were perplexed, meaning confused about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel and really nice clothes. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Who's, who's the dead in that situation? Jesus, right? But he, they don't call him the dead. What do they call him? The, the living. In other words, they're telling them that Jesus is not dead. What is he? He's alive. That's right. Let's keep reading. And they said, he is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. So, what does all of this mean? We just heard all of these things that were said about Jesus. We just heard all of these things that Jesus said himself. What does it all mean? Has Jesus ever made a promise that he didn't keep? No! Every promise that Jesus has ever made, Jesus has kept or he will keep. What it means is that Jesus is who he said he is. And who did he say he is? 
He is the King. He is God Himself. So, last week when we came together, what kind of day was it? It was Friday. We call it Good Friday. It's kind of more like Sad Friday, right? Because Jesus dies. But today, when we come together, is it a sad day? No, this is a good day. This is a happy day. This is a day we're celebrating because the story did not end with Jesus on the cross. Because today we are told that Jesus doesn't stay in that tomb, but he bursts open from the tomb and Jesus is alive. So Jesus is alive. Yeah, he is. Jesus is alive. Yeah, he is. All right, let's pray. We'll have our student prayer leader come up during our prayer together. God, we, Father God, we thank you so much for sending Jesus. The last time we came together, we heard a sad part of Jesus' story in which he was um, hung on a cross in which he died. And Lord, we thank you that you sent Jesus to do that. We thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to go to the cross to die for us, to save us from our sins. So that way we wouldn't just have an earthly life, but that we would have an eternal life with you. Lord, we thank you and we celebrate that Jesus' story didn't end on the cross. That was just a sad part of his story, but that his story continues as he rises from the grave on Easter morning. All this we pray in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand up for our student prayer. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for dying on the cross and rising again. Thank you for all the gifts you've given us and continue to give us. Please be with those who are sick and injured and help those who are in track to do their best at the all-day track meet on Friday. In your name we pray, amen. Let's stay standing for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we're going to sing our next song. our April baptismal remembrance. So if I call your name, would you please come take a uh, kneel up at the altar here? So those celebrating baptisms in Savannah would be 
so, I'm sorry, in April would be Savannah LeMay, Noah Redding, Helen Denny, Ruby Haas, Mr. Rensner, um, Mrs. Fab, sorry, Mrs. Rensner, Mrs. Fabian, Mrs. Benner, and Mrs. Lips. Oh, excuse me. And also, we had uh, Evan Cook was just baptized. Was there one? Was there another? Connor and Connor Harpring, please come on up as well. Recent additions to our list. Exciting stuff. All right. Today we remember that these people have been baptized, just like many of you, um, and that they have been welcomed into the family of God. So we're going to say a quick prayer over these people. Would you guys fold your hands, bow your heads, and pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of baptism. We thank you that in baptism, each one of these individuals, as many of us, have been welcomed into your loving family. Lord, we pray that each day that we would remember our baptisms and that we would celebrate that we have been made part of your family and that we received your inheritance, which is eternal life in heaven with you. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you guys for coming up. You guys can go ahead and go back to your seats. And we are going to stand up and sing our final song together. Corbin, will you turn the guitar up a little bit, please? Thank you. Jesus loves me, this I know, for I won't ask me so.
announcements. Mr. Rezor, if you could give your announcements from the pulpit, that would be great. Thank you. Good morning. If you think back to Good Friday, the altar was stripped. There was no pyramids on the altar. The cross was shrouded in a black veil. But God burst through the tomb as Jesus rose from the dead. And today we have flowers. We have new banners announcing God's gift to us each and every day. We celebrate that indeed. Third through eighth graders, you have a challenge and opportunity to rise to that challenge over the next four weeks. Starting on Monday, the iLearn testing window opens. So you are invited to do your best, to try your hardest, and to use God's gifts to their fullest. Another thing that's approaching quickly is going to be Friday, May 5th, our walkathon and bike rodeo. On Monday, Mrs. Schultz will lead us in a assembly as we kick off that event. Any other announcements for us today? Have a blessed day and a blessed Easter. <laughs>